Are you a photographer, filmmaker, content creator, or someone with a ton of files and want to access them from wherever you are in the world? Well, today we're talking all things NAS. I said NAS, not NAS. We'll cover what exactly is a NAS, how does it compare to DAS, and walk through some setup options for your workflow. So let's get into it. What is NAS? NAS stands for Network Attached Storage and essentially functions by connecting your storage directly to the internet. This allows you to access your data anywhere with an internet connection or wirelessly within your own local network. With the NAS, you also have the ability to grant other users or editors access to the data, making this a great tool for teams and remote work. So how does this compare to DAS? NAS and DAS, sounds kind of funny, these devices differ in a few ways. DAS devices are easy to set up and generally faster since they're directly attached to your computer. This is the best option for those that need the fastest and easiest setup solution. NAS devices, however, are network attached, allowing them to be accessed remotely. They have a built-in computer that facilitates all of its processes and has its own user interface with downloadable apps and automations for the enclosure, which is also accessible through a web browser. This is best for individuals and teams who need access to their files on the go. Now let's go through what a workflow can look like for a small to large sized NAS based setup. For smaller setups that only need a single drive, so anywhere between one to eight terabytes, then a simple NAS like WD's MyCloud will suffice. It connects directly to your router and is intuitive, easy to set up, and a great all around solution. WD software and mobile apps make it easy to back up to the NAS wirelessly. For mid-sized setups, WD offers a duo version of this up to 20 terabytes, and since it's two drives, it can even be set up in RAID 1, which mirrors the data from one disk to the other. Since one of the drives acts as a mirror, if the drive fails, no data will be lost. However, you'll only be able to use half of the total capacity due to the mirroring of one of those drives. As we get into larger setups for production houses or larger operations, we'll be looking at RAID enclosure NASes. And for more information on RAID, you can check out our full backup workflow video above. Essentially with RAID, we can achieve speed advantages and redundancy if a drive fails. It makes it possible to make a massive personal server since we're harnessing the power and capacity of multiple drives. There are many options when it comes to choosing your NAS enclosure and many of them operate in a very similar way with their main difference being the number of drive bays, port capabilities, and user interface. For this example, I'm using the QNAP TSX64, which is a four bay NAS that I can configure in JBOD, RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, or 10. And if I choose a RAID with redundancy, then if a drive goes bad, I can simply swap it out for a new one without any downtime or data loss. You can also have a spare drive in the NAS that kicks into action if a drive fails. This is particularly helpful for those who are traveling. This enclosure has two M.2 slots for installing NVMe SSDs, which can make reading and writing data even faster through caching. For teams, each person can have their own QNAP wherever they are in the world, and you could sync files to their NAS remotely for project material, for example. QNAP offers intuitive apps like QSync that helps automate backup functions so you can have your phone computers back up at a specific time to the NAS. For photographers, QNAP has a photo station and an AI-powered photo management application with facial recognition and object recognition to make browsing photos and videos super easy. Now, similar to our last video where we talked about 321 backup, which suggests you should have three separate backups on two different media types with one offsite, we still want to do that with our NAS as well. If our NAS is our main system we're working from, that needs to be backed up to another on-site storage solution. And it needs to be backed up to the cloud as well. This is where the hybrid backup sync app from QNAP comes into play. It will allow us to back up directly to another local NAS, a remote NAS, say at a family or friend's house, a direct attached USB connection, or cloud services like Azure, Amazon, and Backblaze. For that on-site backup, you can attach a second local NAS, or you can create two separate arrays within one larger NAS. For example, for an eight bay NAS, you can create two separate arrays with one enclosure using those separate four bays. It's important to keep in mind with all the solutions I've put forward in this video, anything wireless is heavily reliant on internet speed. So unless you're wired into your home network, it will be difficult or near impossible to edit off of the NAS. To circumvent this, QNAP's QSync feature lets you store folders locally on your computer and that synchronizes with your NAS. This is similar to a Dropbox folder or a Google Drive folder that syncs with Google Drive cloud servers. This works great when working offline or on the road. And if you don't have enough storage on your computer, you can always sync the NAS folder to an SSD like the SanDisk Professional G40. And once connected to a fast internet connection, the folder will live sync with the NAS, but keep in mind, 
Your hotel Wi-Fi probably won't cut it here, so you're gonna need something a little bit faster. Now, if you don't wanna use these live sync folders, you can always simply plug in the SSD into the NAS when you get back to the device. Hybrid backup sync can even be programmed for a one-touch button backup, so you plug in your drive and start backing up your data. Your data is incredibly important, and we know how valuable it is to have a streamlined workflow. I hope you got some ideas on how to incorporate a NAS into your workflow and the many benefits of doing so. If you have any questions about any of the devices that we talked about today, drop that in the comments down below. Which workflow process should we cover next? Let us know in the comments. My name is Matt. Thanks so much for watching.